Jennifer Rook. Jesse Copeland. Robert Lancan. Journeys in life, 
they should remember certain things. The importance of their parents, their friends, and their memories. First, I'll begin with the importance of parents. Now when I say parents, I'm talking about those who fill the parental role, be it parents, grandparents, guardians, and step-parents. In China, a young adult's parents are the, most are the most important people in his or her life, and I believe it holds true here. See, you must remember that they are the ones who provided and cared for you. Now, I'm the first to admit that the parent-teenager relationship is one of the most difficult and complex relationships in the world, and I think everyone here can agree with me on that. I still remember the first time my father attempted to teach me how to drive. <laughs> it was quite a sight seeing my dad sitting on the passenger side, trying to step on the brake that wasn't there, holding on to the dash for dear life, and grimacing in pain in the anticipation of a wreck. Personally, I don't think I was that bad of a driver, but he swears to this day that he came back home with a few more gray hairs than he started off with. But seriously, parents today rarely receive the credit that they deserve. Instead of taking them for granted, we should appreciate them and more importantly, show our appreciation. From personal experience, I from personal experience, I know I would not be who I am today or as successful as I've been if it weren't for my parents and their ability to instill in me the qualities that make them such great people, and I hope you feel the same about your parents. My second point is the importance of friends. You can attempt to define the word friend or friendship with a sterile de dictionary definition, and it would read something like this, a person whom one knows well and is fond of. But, of course, this definition doesn't exactly convey the true importance of friendship. So instead of taking that route, I turned to a card for the definition of a friend, a card that was given to me by one of my close friends, and this is what it said. A friend should be someone who will always be there, to take time to listen, to help out, to care. A friend should be someone who makes you feel good, who's able to cheer you when no one else could. A friend should be warm, understanding, and true, someone you trust and who will let you be you. I think this definition really expresses the importance of friends. Sometimes, as young adults, we don't always look towards our parents for advice. Most of the time, we should. They have the experience and wisdom that we lack. But to be honest, there have been many occasions where I look towards my friends for support and understanding. One of those times was five years ago when my mother had a stroke. The doctors weren't sure if my mom was going to make it, and the news was one of the biggest shocks of my life. And it was then that I realized how much my mother meant to me, and how life just wouldn't be the same without her. I had friends, though, who helped me and my father get through the hard times. So to Annie, Debbie, Maurice, Jamie, and Jenny, thank you. I know that sentiment doesn't convey much, but I think you must know by now the importance each of you play in helping me get through those hard times. I will never forget the friends I've had, and I'm sure each and every one of you can recall a time when a certain friend helped you in your time of need. If you look around now, you're, you're probably even sitting next to or near one of them. It's easy to forget the things that others have done for you, but as a person who's stepping out into a new and exciting world, you cannot forget those parents or friends who guided and aided you to the position you stand in now. As I said before, my parents were explaining to me some traditional Chinese proverbs, points that I should remember and keep with me as I move on to college. 
The third and last point is probably the most important and the one that has had the greatest impact on me. This is the importance of memory. Who could ever forget our freshman year? We got stuck with those ugly yellow t-shirts. <laughs> we probably placed last in every event during prom. In our first pep rally, half of us were still yelling, Go Bearcats! While the other half just sat there with, as Mr. Reed would say, mouth the gape, arms akimbo. <laughs> then there was our sophomore year. Who remembers scrapbook? Yes, you know, those things that cursed us for an entire semester in 10th grade. How many here had at least two rooms covered with copies construction paper, glue, and glitter. How many of you waited till the weekend before scrapbooks were due to start them? <laughs> Jamie Spiller, raise your hand. <laughs> then comes our junior year. Who could forget Stephanie, AKA the money girl in prom? She was the fundraising queen. How much went through our account? 16,500? And this was auto support at $10,694.18 prom, which lasted only four hours. <laughs> but that didn't stop Steph. No, you could say Stephanie was a little excited about prom in the senior class. Even the word excited doesn't justly describe Stephanie. Remember, we're talking about someone who installed a private phone line so that her phone number would end in, you guessed it, 1996. Do you remember listening to the announcements over the intercom? Hey, juniors and seniors, only 144 hours, 32 minutes, and 45 seconds left till prom. You better hurry up and buy those tickets. You now have only 144 minutes, or 144 hours, 31 minutes, and 58 seconds left. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but not by much. Finally, our senior year came, the year that we've been waiting for our entire school career. But along with our senior year came that disease that we all suffer from, senioritis. I think Nikki Lowry described it best when she called it worse than a rash. Yes, we've had four years of fun-filled memories here at Crystal River High, but we've also had a lot of difficult times, too. Arguments with close friends and family, the loss of a loved one, disappointments, and even failures. Tonight, we are, in a way, celebrating those memories, the good and the bad ones. That's pretty much what graduation is all about. But my parents told me that although you should remember and cherish your memories, you cannot let those memories be the focus of your life. Our future lies ahead, and many of us still have a long road to tread until we reach our goals. A Chinese proverb says that life is like a journey, and the road will not always be smooth. The road has curves, and it's filled with bumps and hills. You have to accept life's challenges head on, and you have to believe that you will overcome the bumps and hills and finally reach your goal. But you can't move forward if you keep looking back. And so these are my words of wisdom, my fellow classmates of 1996. Remember the importance of your parents, your friends, your memories, and your future. I'd like to conclude with a last note, something my dad taught me just the other day. Don't let your failures take the best of you. The moment of failure marks the beginning of your success. Don't ever let life's challenges cheat you out of your goals. Thank you.
as a friend, as a uh, as an acquaintance. Uh, no, Walker. Uh, this young man, uh, Maurice Harold Kara Georges, is a uh, is a fine young man. He's an excellent student. He's the son of Dean and Mirka Kara Georges and Crystal River. Maurice has worked very, very hard to achieve the distinction of being first in his class. He's a member of the National Honor I'm particularly glad my family's here tonight. My father must have uh, really enjoyed that introduction, and my mother may have even believed it. As we all know, this is a very special night for all of us. In a short time, after this ceremony, we will no longer be just the class of 96. Instead, we will be the next generation to join the workforce, to continue our education, or to serve our country. And as we move on into the future, we coincidentally enter at a time when the 1996 Summer Olympics will be held in Atlanta. As athletes from all across the globe prepare to compete in the Games, they give us an example of excellence that demands our attention. When we think of the events that we are looking forward to watching on TV or actually seeing at the Games themselves, we usually think of seeing such sporting events as track and field, boxing, gymnastics, swimming, and other well-known athletic events. These events are full of tradition and date back to the ancient beginnings of the Olympics. We also anticipate the more modern sports of baseball, basketball, and volleyball. The athletes that participate in these Olympic sports develop part of their determination to excel from the glory they bring their countries and the worldwide recognition they receive. But what about athletes who participate in the more obscure Olympic events such as archery, badminton, table tennis, or synchronized swimming? Without a doubt, these less popular athletic events are worthy of competition and do require mental and physical focus and stamina. But what makes that synchronized swimmer get up at 5 a.m. to practice her aquatic pirouette? What makes that badminton player practice for long hours on perfecting his forehand or learn to move as a shuttlecock moves and become one with the shuttlecock? <laughs> I've never seen a sellout crowd in an archery competition or bought a t-shirt with a picture of a synchronized swimming dream team on it. <laughs> the slogan, table tennis, just do it, doesn't have much of a ring to it. Badminton teams don't have cheerleaders or mascots named Sammy the Shuttlecock. <laughs> There's probably not enough people at an archery event to do the wave. Maybe a ripple, but not a wave. Nike probably never invested in the air badminton line of athletic shoes because, hey, the net is only five feet off the ground. And table tennis. Tickets for that event wouldn't stand a chance of being scalped above, oh, a dollar fifty. So if it's not the glory of the sport or the chance to endorse commercial products for enormous sums of money, what drives athletes to train intensely for years in the lesser known events of the Olympics in order to bring back the gold? These athletes have three qualities that make them successful in their events and propel them to their best performances. Desire, determination, and discipline. These three character traits are fundamental to persevering, succeeding in life, and to achieving our goals. We have to want something if we're really going to get it. And I mean really want. Most people in life have their own desires and don't desire the same things we want. Therefore, we have to truly desire our own goals because we may not get help from other people. Along with desire, determination is fundamental. Many people have other names for determination. Some call it drive, some call it willpower, and yes, some call it stubbornness. Whatever the name, you must have it for the speed bumps of life, especially the ones that make us slow down almost idle. True determination is what defies all present odds and gives you the courage to handle the most intimidating task. And lastly, together with desire and determination, comes discipline. Discipline is the self-control that gives us a foundation to our lives by keeping our focus on our goals with minimal distraction. Don't confuse discipline with determination. While determination is what would make us decide to wake up every morning to get a head start on the day, discipline is what keeps us from getting a head start in the day later than we intended by pressing the snooze bar oh three or four times. And as we, the class of 1996, go out into the world, we must embody the spirit and drive of the Olympiads. Just as the Olympiad knows and understands the importance of desire, 
determination, and discipline to his performance on the playing field of athletics, we must remember and incorporate into our lives these three qualities as we enter to compete in the playing field of life. Well, there you have it, my philosophy, my experience. It's up to you to improve upon it if you so choose, and I hope you will. As so many before have added to my life in similar ways, I hope I've added to yours in some small way. I wish the class in 1996 good health, great happiness, and glowing success in whatever we may do. Thank you, and good night.
Richard Wayne Fields. Jennifer Marie Fioretti.
more or less was uh, trying to make decisions when to come out. He said, if we have courage, we'll go out. Said, let's, let's, let's go out. We have courage. This class certainly has courage. And I'm here to congratulate each and every one of you tonight. This is a busy time of year, but despite the busyness of the schedule, it's a favorite time for me because I get to personally meet some of these graduating seniors, learn about them, and learn about their accomplishments. And I've especially enjoyed meeting some of the seniors from the Chris River High School class of 1996. I think this must be an outstanding class, and let me just reflect upon a few of my experiences regarding these students. Maurice Kerr Georges and Janice Ho represent the highest standards of academic, academic excellence and achievement. I've experienced the enthusiasm and positive approach to life of the Cole Ben Joe, Joe Vicari and Amy Darlin have demonstrated the competitive drive and the work ethic to be champions. I've seen the tremendous leadership of Emily Schoenfeld and Stephanie McLeod. I've been inspired and humbled by the determination and courage of Brian Grimm. Tom Holm exemplifies discipline, character, and service. And finally, I've learned of Crystal Ellis, her self-sacrificing love and care for her family, while still maintaining the effort to excel in the classroom as a student. These are just a few examples of the outstanding qualities of the class of 1996. Ralph Waldo Emerson says, what lies behind us and what lies before us are small matters compared to what lies within us. And I tell you that what lies within this, graduate, this graduating class, these graduates, should give all of us cause to celebrate tonight, to look forward to their future and to our future as well. Class of 96, you can be proud of your achievements and the success of your class. Congratulations and may God bless each and every one of you. Stand. Christopher High School class of 1996, having met the requirements set forth by the state of Florida and the Central County School Board, I hereby declare you graduates. You may turn your tablets. Before we sing the alma mater, I want to take a moment to thank a couple of people who have made all this possible tonight, despite all the bad weather. Uh, Mrs. Hickey and Mr. Harley have spent many hours out here along with Mr. Sumlin and the custodial staff, and I want to thank them very much for what they've done. Would you now please, all of us, stand? To the band. The words to our alma mater, I believe, are in the program. If we would join us in singing our alma mater. <laughs> 